Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. This one is specifically for Rift S owners that want a few, I guess, tweaks and tips and maybe some advice on how to set up their headset for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I will say, I'm certainly no oracle on all this, guys. I'm just a enthusiast flight simmer geek, probably just like you. So, you know, I'm sure there's tons of great advice out there on the forums, but for this particular video, I'm just going to go through some of my essential, I guess, uh, settings that I use in the sim. Now, first of all, we're going to start with the Oculus software itself. This is really important. You need to go to settings, go to beta and opt in to the beta test channel. At the time of this recording, be it the, what is it, the 4th of January, you need to make sure that you are subscribed, I guess, or, you know, you've got this option ticked because that means that horrible, annoying black stencil image will no longer appear in your vision. That is essential. Without that, you're going to have a horrible time. So that's the first thing. Now let's have a look. So also you need to be making sure that you're running, in my opinion, anyway, the 452.06 NVIDIA driver. That's if you are using an NVIDIA card or somewhere around that time, because that's when Microsoft Flight Simulator was released and that's when NVIDIA paid close attention to that sim. I think the newer drivers, particularly for 30 series cars, are having quite an impact on performance. So don't even go there, just use that uh, driver. With that being said, we're now gonna look at Microsoft Flight Simulator's path for VR. In other words, it needs to know which runtime to use. Now I have both the Rift S and the Reverb G2 so I have to change these values on a regular basis, actually. And there is an easy way of doing it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you this method. You need to basically run your registry editor, as you can see here, and get to this path here. So don't worry, guys. I'm going to put this, this text here in the link below. And all you need to do is copy and paste. That's it. Uh, so we, as you can see here, I'm just going to do this to show you basically copy and paste that line in the top there. And then we should have this active runtime. That is the path that Microsoft Flight Simulator uses to run VR. And if you had problems with the, your headset not being found, this is the reason. So here I've got my path for my Windows Mixed Reality runtime for my Reba G2. I've got Steam VR, which I wouldn't really recommend using, to be honest, anyway and the actual Rift S Oculus software. Now yours might be slightly different, okay? Most likely it will be your C drive, okay? So I'm gonna put that in the link in the description below as a C drive, okay? Uh, but, you know, just make sure that you do know where your Oculus support software is um, and just do a quick search on your computer if you're not sure. Once you've found it, okay, which should be fairly easy, copy it and then what we're gonna do is gonna go down here right click modify and then as you can see here i've set it to the reverb g2 i'm going to change it to the rift s paste click ok there you are that's all you need to do now you are set to go so what else do we need to do here right okay so we've done the drivers we've done the oculus right this is the important thing open xr okay don't even bother using it for your oculus software you don't need to i would recommend using the oculus Traitor or your Oculus debug software, which is actually completely free and part of your Oculus software. So if you find, I mean, as I say, this is my path, my Oculus software here, and this is my debug tool. If you click on this and this little box will come up here and it does look a bit complicated. You might go, what am I doing? Don't worry. You just need to look at two different values, pixel per display, override all that means is your super sampling you know like the open xr slider the render scale slider the render scale slider in the sim and steam vr it's all the same thing okay it's just a different way of doing it i would set that to about 1.2 or 1.3 okay nothing more than that because we're gonna upscale it in the sim anyway so let's say we'll go for 1.3 okay there we go and then the other one you need to look at is the motion projection. This is the big deal for the Rift S owners, and this is one of the causes for concern. It's quite ironic in a way that Oculus has the best motion smoothing in the business. 
you can go down to 20 frames per second in this sim and have really smooth motion. The only problem is it doesn't stay at 20. It will jitter around from 20 to 27 and 30 and 35. And that will cause artifacting and uh, it will, you know, like the terrain juddering, which you don't want. You don't want that. So, I mean, I would recommend maybe trying it disabled first. The only thing is, is that you will get a bit of terrain sort of ghosting but you might find the overall experience is better than with it on. But you know what? This is a contentious one and it's still a sort of work in progress. I'm trying to find a better way to, I mean, what we really need is any of you that have used uh, the Rift S in X-Plane 11, there is an OVR tool that locks your motion projection to 27 frames per second. That's what we need because that way it'll be really smooth. But because it's jumping around all the time, I'd actually recommend disabling it altogether. Now, the only thing is this Oculus debug tool, you'll have to set this every time you start Windows. You don't want to be doing that. You, you want to be getting up and flying, surely. So really the best thing I recommend is to use the Oculus Tray tool, which, where is it? In mine, it's here. Um, and I'll, again, put this in the link in the description below. So here it is. And when it loads up, this is what you'll be looking at. Don't worry about the version I'm running. It's a bit old, but you know, I hate updating software constantly. It's really annoying. So I'm a bit lazy, but it works just the same. And all we need to do is again, focus on those two particular settings, default super sampling. Okay. Set this to about 1.3 and then you've got your asynchronous time warp, motion projection, whatever, you, you know, it, it said differently if you're using Steam VR or Windows Mixed Reality, but it's, it's basically the same thing. Set this to either auto, but maybe try it off. I think you should try it disable first, see how you get on, because I do feel that the jittering is so bad in the, in the Rift S that unfortunately you'll have to just take it off altogether. Once that's set, just basically forget about it. And uh, you know, that will load up like that every time. I'd recommend actually that you it starts up w uh, when you start Windows as well. Uh, that way it'll keep your settings. So there we are. So to recap, Oculus Tray Tool, set 1.3 in super sampling and motion projection off. Run the 452.06 NVIDIA driver. Make sure your Oculus is set to beta channel and that you've got the correct path in your registry settings. Whew, take a break, have a cup of coffee, come back in a moment and we'll have a look at the settings inside the sim. See you in a moment. So welcome back. We are now in the sim itself in the graphics menu. And if my voice sounds a bit different, I do apologize. I've actually tried to record this five times this part of the video, but I've been having some microphone problems. But anyway, we're gonna actually start weirdly with the flat screen settings. Now you may think I've gone mad, and you know what, that's very possible. But actually, this is quite important and something I haven't seen anywhere else. Now, most of you on this channel, I would expect, especially if you're watching this video, is gonna be running this sim in VR. But I don't know about you, I actually start up in 2D mode and get my flight ready, and I don't actually jump into VR until I'm uh, in the aircraft. If you're one of them people as well, I recommend setting your PC uh, configuration to medium or something similar to what you're running in VR. And the reason for that is, if you've got all your settings at ultra, your computer basically is having to deal with uh, loading tons of data, tons of uh, level of detail of textures, only to throw it away again once VR settings are enabled. That actually causes stutters and in some cases notice the sim doesn't actually recover from it. So bear that in mind. Right, with that being said, we're now gonna move on to the VR settings. You can see here, I'm actually uh, running the, this is the Reverb G2 settings that I run. And I thought I'd show you this first because I just make a few minor tweaks to it. Now, in terms of the render scaling, we've already set that in the Oculus Tray tool to about 1.3. But the render scaling here, we could actually get away with 110 maybe 120, just to give it that beautiful sort of crisp uh, display, which does look, by the way, really good in the Rift S. It looks fantastic, but play around with that. But I tend to run about 110 in the sim with my uh, tray tool set to 1.3. Gives it a nice performance boost that without, you know, sacrificing too many of those precious frames. 
In terms of uh, the AA, I keep that at TAA. That's very important. Terrain level of detail, I actually back that off. And, you know, actually, uh, I find 90 to be a pretty decent trade-off. The reason why I backed it off is because simply the Rift S, you can't see as far out as you can with a Reverb G2 because of that screen door effect. So having your LOD setting really high is a complete waste of resources, in my opinion. So the next thing I'm going to look at, actually, all of these are the same as my Reverb G2. Object level detail still 100. I'm actually going to take away the filtering back to two times because again, the sort of far out distance, you can't see it very well with the Rift S, so it's a waste of resources. Keep going down here, everything's pretty much else is the same. I do actually have the volumetric clouds set to ultra. Now, I think this probably is one of the bigger sort of frame rate killers, but it's also one of the biggest deals of this sim for me personally. I think, you know, the weather simulation in this sim is revolutionary and I'm happy to take a hit on performance, up to about 30% I think it is. But, um, you know, you might differ. You might actually just fly in clear skies all the time, in which case that's absolutely fine. You know, these are just my settings that I'm running and hopefully it'll give you a, an idea of what the Rift S is capable with with my specs of my computer. So, as we go down the list here, I think everything else is pretty much the same. I do run light shafts at high as well with the Rift S, but make sure you restart your computer because that actually, sorry, restart the sim rather, because that doesn't take effect until you do so. And cockpit refresh rate, I don't know why that's set to low, because it should be at high again, because the Rift S gives me that extra bit of performance. You know, being able to go down to a lot lower frame rate really helps this sim. Right, guys, are you still with me? If you are, I've got one more thing to say. And that is of a really incredible tweak guide that I have come across. Uh, in fact, I did a while ago, but I just forgot to tell you about it because so much is going on. That is the VR Bang for Buck performance guide, which I'll link in the description below. This guy during the beta process was invaluable to all of us. And I thank him if he's watching. You are a legend and you are very knowledgeable about this kind of thing far more than I am. I'd recommend having a coffee, chilling out, <laughs> and just having a read of this, because these settings, he goes through each and every one of them and describes it in great detail, and lists from top to bottom the percentage that you lose for certain effects and settings. And there you are, look, actually, the clouds are at 30%. And that was just a good guess on my part, but I knew they'd be quite high. Ambient occlusion, weirdly, is a really high uh, performance impact, so I've taken that off completely. So is reflections. So honestly, go through this and basically spend a bit of time getting that sweet spot. I know, guys, it's really, really frustrating, and this sim demands a bit of time setting your computer up. But honestly, in this climate, I really feel that once you get it dialed in, you're going to absolutely love VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I really truly feel it's a revolution in terms of what it's giving us Flight Simulators these days. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you for your support. We've actually just blasted through 7,000 subscribers, which is absolutely incredible. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I just love sharing my passion for VR and Flight Simulation with all you guys. It really is great. So take care. Hopefully some of those settings will have some use to you. If you found something else that I haven't mentioned, which is entirely possible, please do comment in the section below for other people to try. And I wish you all a very, very happy new year. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.